Background music and ambience brought to you in part by Midnight Syndicate. Music for the imagination and the perfect musical accompaniment for the Dungeons and Dragons role playing game. <laughs> Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. In a world that is not what it seems, and where people are not who they appear to be, where puns run rampant through the streets, and it's hard to tell who the real monsters are. Three heroes fight to keep the world of Euphray from ripping apart, and to keep Tim and Terry from getting even more screwed. Now, let's join the Sir Thaddeus Treblecock, the Wild Magic Sorcerer, Malfader the Fallen Asimar Oathbreaker, and the Half-Satyr, Half-Halfling Bard, McNastly, as they bend together in their enduring pursuit of A Fool's Quest. And we are recording. So where last we left off, our heroes made it to Sadomar. They had to redo an entire half hour of recording because our shit <laughs> fucking broke. This is the first time in all three seasons we finally lost a whole recording yeah. session. At least it wasn't like an entire night. Correct. It yeah. could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. Yes. Um, okay, so they made it to say tomorrow where they need to break into the collective, check out Thorkillen's vault. They also had a couple of side quests where they need to take the marijuanas, the medical marijuanas with healing powers to the hospital hospital here in Sadomar. And then they wanted to check out the Gagme vault in the collective for potential items that they were looking for to further on their side quests. They recently met up with two other fainting satyrs, Romeo and Juliet, who led them up here and got them to the area where they were beginning on the first floor, which is the bottom floor of the city of Sadomar. Sadomar is broken into four floors. The bottom floor is the largest floor, and it houses the inns, taverns, businesses, shops, that sort of stuff. The floor above that is the second floor. That's where all the citizens reside. Above that is the third floor, which is the floor of the government buildings and permanent buildings for the city, such as the hospital that's here in St. Omar, as well as the Gagney Outpost building. And then above that is the the holy area, the temple, if you will, on the top floor, which is just pretty much a wide open church. It's the smallest of the floors, but it is where people can go to worship one of the 12 gods. So you guys get here to the area and you all split up and go different ways. So let's kick it off first over to McNastly. What do you do now that you're in Sadomar and you all split up? As we split up, I'm going to give each of uh, Romeo and Juliet a gold piece and a child's kazoo for their troubles. <laughs> uh, specify it's a child's kazoo. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then wish them luck on their uh, adventures. Send them on their merry way. Yep. Yep. Send them to kazoo into the woods. <laughs> Slowly creating an army of kazooing goats. <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, there'll be many, many kazooing goats. They will just be getting started on their romantic getaway where they can... Kazoo they can all night. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and then kazoo it. after you do that, what do you do inside the city of Sadamar? Uh First stop is going to be shopping, as always. Okay. Because it's what I'm required to do. <laughs> <laughs> Though McNastley is broke, so he's actually going to sell a 200 gold diamond okay. that was inexplicably in the bag for some reason. Oh, uh, you don't remember how you got that diamond? I completely fucking forgot. Oh, yeah. So when you guys were visiting Salune's area, you made an offering of 10 gold to her. And oh, she that's right. said, That is the 10 yeah, gold right. diamond. Yeah. I wonder why you made that comment the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, where she said that uh, she does, your money's no good here, essentially. We will value your music here. And so she gave you back your 10 gold, but it turned into a diamond worth 200 gold. Ah. Yeah. Uh,. Uh, I am going now you're to be... sell a god's diamond that they gave you. 
She said the money was useless to her, not to me. <laughs> I need that cash flow. <laughs> Got potions to buy and spells to cast. Gotta do shit. Yeah, gotta if, do shit. If you want to sell something that God gave you, that's on you. Ah, uh, man. I'm not the one getting magic items from gods. I'm getting fucking diamonds. You don't know how much that flask is worth. I, I don't know nothing about it yet. That's uh, that my flask, second stop. That flask could buy you a whole shop for all you know. <laughs> that's true. Um... Okay, so you sell that off. I'm going to yeah attempt to sell it for 300 gold. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I don't know why I fake rolled. <laughs> I already failed this roll earlier. Uh, so 200 gold for that one. It's kind of a do-over, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> We're not redoing the rolls. I was hoping he'd be like, re-roll it. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're stalling. Again. You're like, so I'm going to oh. attempt to... Yeah, so, really hoping I get away it, with that. so you need to put in the disclaimer of what actually happened. <laughs> yes. oh, we, we've already talked about it. We're, yeah, okay, we're good. Going. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to attempt to sell that for 300. They'll tell me to eat dicks. And I'll sell it for 200. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to canvas uh, the shops on the way out. See if there's anything by the doorways that is fiefable. Yep, and there are some things that are theftable, uh, but they are... Neither one of those is correct. <laughs> <laughs> they are basic camping stuff, bedrolls, tents, cooking gear, that sort of stuff. Stuff that pre- pretty much all is under 20 to 30 gold. But are the kind of things that I could like Skyrim these assholes, just steal them, and then, and then sell, them, sell them the next day. <laughs> They're like, hey, hey, whoa, I found Four all this tents, shit. Four tents, a couple of bed rolls, a couple backpacks. Yeah, weird. You could <laughs> definitely make that attempt. <laughs> I'll debate on it. <laughs> debate on it. All right, so while you're ca- canvassing oh the area, let's go ahead and switch over to Malfader. Malfader, what are you doing now that you're in Sadamar? Okay, um, I'm probably just going to make a beeline to the Gagme headquarters. Okay. Um, you know, casually glance at the shops as they go through, but I'm not really in the market for anything at the moment. Okay. Because they're all broke bitches. Oh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> so you make it up to the third floor where the Gagme buildings are. And the Gagme building itself... So so making your way around Sadamar, not only did you get some descriptions earlier from different people as well as Romeo and Juliet, but it's also a pretty well mapped out area, right? It's it's four shelves. They're kind of open areas. They've got hallways and signs and stuff. So you get to the thir- third floor and you can see signs that point to this way to the hospital, this way to Gagme, and you can just follow those along the way to get to those. So you get to the Gagme Outpost Follow building. Follow the signs. <laughs> you get to the Gagme Outpost building, and it looks kind of like a private detective agency where uh, it is got the glass doors with the print on the, you know, uh, on the window that says, you know, <laughs> Gagme Office Building. Like the, the, the smoked glass with the gold, yes. gold leaf letters. Exactly. Humphrey Bogart is in one of these rooms. Right. Somewhere. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yep, yep, very noir-esque. Noir. Nice. Noir. Nice. Snurf. So you get in, and do you wait for your comrades, or do you go right to the right to Manny's door? Um, I'm going to make just go on in like I own the place or live there, you know, kind of like his new thing now. All right, so you just walk right into Manny's office? Yeah. All right, Don't so- even knock open the door and walk in. So Manny was sitting there doing some paperwork, writing some stuff down, and he looks up and he's like, hey, how's it going, man? What what can I help you with? I see by the door that you are Manny. Yeah, you see right. Manny. I see by your cloak that you're uh, you're Gagme, huh? Yes, I am. Very cool. I'm uh, Malfader from Cheddar, along with Dairy Coast. Malfader from Cheddar, from the Dairy Coast. And Malfader from Cheddar. Oh, you're one of the guys that are coming up to get into the collective, aren't you? Yes, I am. Where's your fellas? Uh, they had a few errands of their own to run. Uh, they'll be along shortly. Ah, very cool. Very cool. I know what you're here for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I hear you have uh, some information on the collective that may pertain to what we're looking for. Yeah, actually, I've got a, I've got a good pal of mine, Montague. He's uh, he's here in the building. We'll wait till your fellows sure, get here. And sure. We'll bring that over. In the meantime, I haven't been to Cheddar in a very long time. How would a... Uh, what would you say to a fresca, my friend? Hmm. I don't believe I ever had one. He pulls out a drawer in his desk and cracks open a can and slides it across the table. And he's like, fresca, elven made, beautiful things. You should go ahead and try one. Hey, while we're sitting here waiting for your fellas, why don't you tell me a little bit about Jetta? I heard that there was a 
some shenanigans that happened down there with Munster. Oh, yes. Now, uh, yeah, now Chuck is in charge. Like, why don't you... Uh, yeah, I can I can probably fill you in on that whole backstory. It actually eventually ties into why we're here, so... Very cool. Yeah, let's let's do that. And he cracks open a fresco for himself and... Don't join the church. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, the church of fresco. The church of the collective. <laughs> the church of the... So... It's a boy's reference. So, yeah, you sit down and you shoot the shit with him while you're waiting on your friends to get back, right? Yeah. All right. Very cool. We will now cut over to... Thaddeus, who is has also made it to the third floor. And you went straight to the Mercy Me Hospital. Yep. And uh, I'll go to the... I want to take the the batch of grain that Clarence gave me and split it in half. I'm only going to give them half of what he gave me to give them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll just go into reception and uh, ask about who handles the purchases, who handles the uh, supply lines. Right. All right, so you walk into reception, and there is a Warforge there. And the Warforge looks up at you and says, Hello, welcome, welcome to Mercy Me Hospital. Hospital. What, what is, is your emergency? emergency? Uh, no emergency. I actually have a, a delivery to make uh, from a potential medicine supplier. Oh, very, very good. good. Do, you Do you know, know who, who you, you are, are to meet with? with? Nope, he said to just bring this to the hospital and uh, drop it off. So here it is. Okay, so the Warforge does not actually take the product from you. Instead, he pulls out a doctor's prescription pad, and he puts his hand over it and begins to write something out. And then he tears off the paper off the pad and hands it to you and says, You will actually need to go four rooms down on the left and speak with Frosty. Frosty the robot will be waiting for you, and he will discuss the terms I will hang my head slightly that I have to deal with another Warforged <laughs> and say, okay, thanks, and move down the hall. As you move down the hall, the Warforged peers back over his shoulder and he says, Hey, be, be careful. careful. Frosty, Frosty is, is kind, kind of a hard ass when, when it comes, comes to suppliers. suppliers. Good, Good luck. luck. Thanks. All right, so you make your way on down to Frosty's door. It is so labeled. Um, with some of that frosty glass, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's easy to find. Now I'll knock on the door. All right, and you hear a voice from inside go, "Who is it?" Uh, my name is Thaddeus. I am here with a delivery from Clarence. Come on in. So I walk in, and uh, I I have this medicine delivery uh, from a gentleman named Clarence. He would like you to become a client. Uh, so I will just leave this with you. And he looks down at the uh, the medical supplies and says, Is, is Clarence, Clarence a, a druid? druid? Yes, he is. Uh, that, that is one, one of the prerequisites for purchasing herbal goods. Okay, okay. please follow me. And Frosty is on wheels. He backs up, goes back to his desk, pulls out a drawer and grabs a hat and a scarf out of his desk drawer and puts the hat on his head and wraps the scarf around his neck and wheels out the door. Top hat. Yeah, top hat. <laughs> top hat, yes. Scarf. Black. Frosty. Yeah. All right, I'll follow him. Frosty the robot. All right, so he leads you down just a few doors to... Uh, another door and he knocks on the door and says it is time for your medicine and opens up the door and inside you can see a tabaxi with his foot up in a cast and the frosty the robot says we have a new supply of medicine here would you like to try it and the tabaxi says yeah sure <laughs> Very non-committal. Yeah. yeah. So might as well. <laughs> Got nothing else to do. <laughs> All right. Okay. So. <laughs> Drugs are good. Okay. Little drug. <laughs> Frosty the robot <laughs> takes the uh, medical supplies from you and takes it over and packs a bowl for the tabaxi and has him smoke and. 
it uh, it takes about 15 minutes to, to really kick in and for the guy to have anything. And it actually does have some healing properties, though, too, it, that Frosty seems to be able to track. And so Frosty goes, well, it took a little bit longer to kick in than what we normally like, but we will be adding Clarence's client list to our approved list of vendors. Excellent. Uh, I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that. Uh, so I'll just be on my way then. Okay. And then I'll leave and uh, head up to the fourth floor to the temple. Okay. So you guys have some weed from Clarence. And that weed, actually, if you smoke it, will give you 1d6 hit points back. You can use the weed a total. Don't write that down. I have the weed. Yeah, but if I have to smoke your weed, I need to know what it does. You're not going to smoke any of my weed. <laughs> Gives you 1d6 for hit. Stingy old man. Hit I'll point. find better weed. It's for his glaucoma. <laughs> I'll grow my own fucking weed. <laughs> 1d6 HP. Yep. Weed. And it's got six uses. Man, I'm going to grow that better weed. I'm going to get that fucking d10 weed. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. But until you have it. A different strain. Uh, you don't have the d6 weed. <laughs> I'll steal your D6 weed. Never even notice. She's like, Can I smoke that? I might have smoked it. <laughs> She's just wandering around camp. What's that smell? There's a skunk here somewhere. <laughs> so while you're leaving the Mercy Me Hospital, let's cut back over to McNasley, who is leaving the first floor. And where are you going while you're contemplating growing your own magic weed? <laughs> For some reason, out of nowhere, just a random thought pops into your head. A little voice in my head. Similar to Malfaders, but my voice is like, smoke weed! How <laughs> like, oh, aggressive. Uh, I'm going to head up to Your voice the... isn't as annoying as mine. <laughs> no, just talk about weed a lot. It's weird. Uh, I'm going to go up to the fourth floor to the temple. Okay. So that is the farthest floor from where you are. So it does take you a little bit of time to get back up there, but you are definitely doing that. And Malfader, you are still in there shooting the shit with me. I'm Annie. a fresca drinking bitch. Yep, you guys are three <laughs> frescas in, and it's really starting to get to your bladder. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's let's go ahead and come back over to Thad then. <laughs> so you're out of the hospital now. Where where are you going? Heading up to the temple. Uh, I would like to find a priest of Dionysus and uh, ask about the flask that I found. Okay. that was given to me. So Thad and McNasley both make it up to the fourth floor, which is the smallest floor. It is an open floor with uh, altars that surround it in kind of a giant U shape. Kind of and like, Kind of like the Temple of the Twelve we were at before? Yep, like the Temple of the Twelve that Malfader, Malfader was at with Hobbs right. and Ingvald. And you can easily identify which one is the altar for Dionysus. Okay. It's the one with all the alcohol. <laughs> yes, it's a guy with like Greek attire on, a toga, some, you know, olive branch twigs in his hair, and some very gracious. Yeah, like a beer can ball cap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, perfect <laughs> finger. <laughs> Just a bottle of olive oil. No reason. <laughs> Real odd. Oh uh, yes. Um, all right, so you guys both arrive at the same time, and you both start making your way to that specific altar. Okay. Uh, seeing McNasley's here, I will uh, get one of the priests and ask if we can speak privately for a moment, because I didn't tell Malfader about the flask, so I tr- want to keep it secret until I know what it does. And the priest says, yes, you can follow me back here. And he takes you around to the priest break room. <laughs> Remember the last time a priest told me that? <laughs> it's it's like an open spot. There's a couple priests back there uh, already. Both of them are like taking smoke breaks. Yeah, you know, so this is shit priests. <laughs> <laughs> no priests. Uh, you never watched Exorcist, have you? Uh, the scary one. Yeah. yeah. No. The anime. Yeah. Yes. No. The <laughs> the old movie from the seventies. All the priests were smoking and drinking and hanging out. The power of Christ compels you. The power, the power of Christ, Christ compels you! Well, yeah. that's just the 70s. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you make it back there, and McNasley, what are you doing at the altar? Uh, I'm going to uh, pray to Dionysus and offer something. 
once I figure out what I have really quick. I'm going to offer a tune. A tune? Because I'm still broke. So, and gold doesn't work for gods, as we found well, out. Well, it doesn't work for Saloon. Dionysus might like gold. Uh, he likes alcohol, and I don't have any with me. No. <laughs> yes, go ahead and make a performance check for your song. That'll be easy enough. 28. Holy crap. Wow. Is that a nat 20, or? No, I have a plus 10. Okay, so, <laughs> wow. All right. So you s- go up to the altar, and you begin playing a very lovely song to Dionysus that is just, like, you start to have other people leave their altars and come over to watch you play while you're playing. Huge, yeah, benefit. It's all on a kazoo. It's not that great. It's pretty I great. Mean, I mean, the rolls don't lie. It's kazoos. It's almost like he's playing this this golden, or he's playing this kazoo, and it's almost like there's an orchestra <laughs> just behind it. Just amazing. Amazing indeed. Actually, so what I'm going to do, uh, you said I have a crowd around me right now? Yeah. Then I am going to... You're going to cleave six people so that you can bring some skulls back to my finger. I can't quite do that. <laughs> no, I'm going to... Let's see. Uh, I'm going to use Mantle of Majesty, which uh, once per long rest, as a bonus action, I can cast... Oh, wait, no. Are you going to turn worshipping into a money-making situation? Nope. Oh. Uh, I was casting the wrong thing. Sorry, enthralling performance. So, uh, as long as these people listen to me for one minute, uh, I can choose four creatures that watch and listen, and they are they have to make a wisdom saving throw or be charmed for one hour. Or until they take damage or are attacked or anything what? like that. Are you charming random people? You'll find out if I get a couple people. <laughs> that, now he has groupies. All right, so two of them made their saves and two of them did not. The two that didn't are charmed in the name of Dionysus, so they're going to worship at the Psalter. All right. Yep. So you grab two other people and are having them. Essentially, I'm converting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All that right. Makes sense. Yep. Yep. That does make sense. All right. So you converted two other people from random religions. You don't even know what altars they came from. They just appeared, no. and then they were so For moved by your performance that they begin worshiping Dionysus. Yeah. All right. So Thad, behind the curtains with the other priests. Yes. You're back there. With Go the, ahead. <laughs> walk back there with five priests. So the, the priest you were talking to lights up a, uh, a cigarette, and he's like, so what can I help you with, my son? Um, I pulled a flask out of my pack, and I recently came into this item, um, and I have reason to believe it is related to Dionysus, and I was wondering if you could tell me what it was. No, no jokes about how we came into a flask. <laughs> we Nobody. Made, we already made the joke once, and I lost it. All right. Nope. nope. Not as funny the second time. I even paused. I waited for it, but it didn't happen. I mean, you shouldn't come into things around priests. <laughs> That's all I have to That's, say about it. It's their uh, job. All right. Yeah, it's their job. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna touch it for a minute and then identify it. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a genie in a bottle, but what comes out is not fun. <laughs> All right. Nobody wishes for that. So you asked him to identify. He says, yeah. I so will... Heavy. I will definitely give it my best effort, my son. And may I see it? Yep, yeah, I'll hand it to him. All right, he takes it from you, and he casts Identify, and he does identify it. Cool. What is it? It is... The Hunter Destroyer. It is called the Doctor Mage's flask it's a wondrous item and it requires attunement by a spellcaster with level 2 spells or higher what was it the doctor what doctor mages flask. flask yep and I'll put it in D&D beyond for you but essentially what it does it requires attunement from a spellcaster with level 2 spells or higher this plain steel bottle has a cork stopper and a hemp strap knotted to it unattuned once per day, a creature may spend an action to drink from the flask. Doing so restores 1d4 hit points. Attuned once per day, a spellcaster can spend an action to drink from the flask. Doing so expends one of their level 2 spell slots and allows the spellcaster to cast both Cure Wounds at rank 2 and Lesser Restoration on oneself. Wow. Cool. So Cure Wounds on yourself? 
And lesser restoration. And lesser restoration. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice. So you cast essentially a rank two cure wounds and a rank one lesser restoration at the same time on yeah. yourself for nice. one for one spell slot. Yep. Nice. So essentially, the cowardly mage man now can also heal himself if he so happens to get touched. Yep. I mean, and then smoke a joint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Uh, in order to attune with it, you need to fill it up with alcohol and get drunk off it one night. Okay. And once we're back in Cheddar, you can get that top, that top rank booze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So right now it's um, unattuned, and you can spend an action each day to restore one d four hit points. Okay. Let's see. I feel like I should leave an offering for Dionysus now, but I don't have... Try, try and one-up my offering, bitch. <laughs> I don't have anything. Did I get anything for my offering, by the way? Uh, you'll get the boon from... What, what's his boon again? Uh, let me pull up the gods. I always forget his boon. Oh, you know what? Yep. Uh, I will leave the one... Flask. No. <laughs> Dionysus likes to party. Yep. I will leave him one use of the D6 weed oh. as a uh, as a as a thank offering. You. Yeah. Yep. And it turns Quid out Dionysus quo. is a prude. <laughs> He's like, just a boost. Dionysus' <laughs> boon for you, McNasley, is plus 10 temporary hit points. Oh, nice. All right. So does that wrap you guys up at the temple? Yep. I'm yeah. good. I'm ready to head down to gag me. I left some extra followers behind. I'm having a good time. <laughs> All right. So, Malfader, we're going to cut back over to you. You and Manny are actually having some good chuckles right now. Mm. At this point, you've talked through kind of the lower bits of the storyline and caught him up on the sadder portions mm-hmm. and talked through the more serious portal issues, which he kind of knew some of that stuff already from his correspondence with Am I a Real Quest Slinger? And you guys are now just joking and shooting the shit about the trials that you guys went and he's just <laughs> telling you about his trials and you're telling him about yours and the differences <laughs> between them and how stupid other groups were and I didn't even know that dragon was there <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and then you see through the glass the frosted glass panes uh, the door opens up and you can tell that a satyr is walking through the building <laughs> you know <laughs> Ah, that would be McNashley. The faint kazoo. <laughs> My rapier just kind of wiggling a little bit. <laughs> Whistling. Yeah, I'll step to the door. And step outside. This way, guys. Follow him in. Yep. So you guys follow him in. Manny Vedito says, Hey, you must be McNashley, am I right? You're all right, sir. Very nice, very nice. It's... You know, pretty commonplace to see Seder folk around here, so, you know, not as uh, off-putting as maybe some of the other places. You should feel right at home, my man. Oh, well, I actually didn't grow up with the Seders. Grew up really? with the halflings. Wow, okay. That's that's interesting. Uh, that's, that's a story I'd love to get from you, maybe, sometime at the roundabout. How's that sound? Perhaps, sir. Sounds good. Buy you a drink. You can tell me all about it. And then he uh, looks over to that, and he goes... Sir Thaddeus Troublecock, I've heard a lot about you, my friend. I'm sorry we haven't crossed paths before. Weren't you a court mage as of late? Uh, yes. I just forgot where I was a mage at. Oh, shit. That's okay, I know. Sometimes when you get older, you start <laughs> you get to older, forget that. things. I start to yeah. forget things all the time, man. Uh, you were a court mage as of late? I don't know, was I? <laughs> <laughs> I might have been, I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, I just do what they tell me. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> the Yubi Yubishi Isles. That's where it was. Yep. Yep. That okay. sounds like a sushi restaurant. It. They had sushi there. There you go. <laughs> uh, yes, I was a court mage in uh, Yubishi Isle. Oh, I've never been there, but I've heard really good things. It's beautiful. Is it now? Yes. Oh, so nice. So nice to hear that. All right, well, here's the deal, my friends. So we're going to get you into the collective. I was just telling your your man over here, Mel Fader, we've got some ideas, we've got some tools to get into the collective. Unfortunately, it's not me that's going to be able to tell you. I've got my partner here in town. His name is Montague. Montague Brenhart. He's got his husband, Killian Brenhart. 
Killian works for the Diamond Security Guild in the Collective. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take you over to Montague's office, do a little introduction, and tell you, or let him tell you about the Collective. Sound all right? Very well. Sounds great. All right, why don't you guys follow me this way? And he stands up and he grabs another fresca and hands it to Malfader as you guys leave the room. <laughs> they both... Probably like, surrounded in cans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Building a little pyramid. Yeah, they're stacked up. <laughs> Looks like a college dorm room in there. <laughs> right. And he takes you guys across the hall. Like I said, it's kind of a um, like a PI style thing, you know? So it's mm-hmm. a very narrow halls that you walk across, like that really awkward carpeting that's almost as hard as like actual hardwood floor right. that is like the real walking thin on carpet. might as well just not half carpet exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yep and so he walks over and he knocks on the door of montague brenhart hey montague you in there where else would i be darling this is where they keep me all day and night oh wonderful can we come in i've got some guests for you say please ah please come in come in so i click open the door i walk in uh, manny walks in the door and he says Montague, these are my friends, other gag me recruits. Uh, this guy here, to the tall, the tall guy here, his name is Mel Fader. Then we've got this older gentleman here, his name is Sir Thaddeus Troublecock. And then we've got this uh, halfling satyr fella here, his name is McNasley. These are the boys that got sent up from Cheddar to take a look into the vault. Boys, this is Montague Brenhart. He's one of the best wizards you're going to find around town. Montague here has some inside info, but I'll leave that to him to explain to you. All right, come on in, take a seat. Hello, everybody. Darlings, it's so good to see you. Except you, Trouble Cock. I've gotten in trouble with Cock plenty of times in the past. <laughs> Not a good sign. Trust me on that. You know, Oigo Vault and the whole thing. Trust me, it, it's an elvish thing. It's an elvish thing. <laughs> I am Montague. But Montague, when you see him, he is not sitting in the chair because he was prepared for you to walk in. So he's like sitting at the edge of his desk. He's wearing um, a button down white shirt with a uh, black vest and a little red bow tie. Um, He's wearing these like black tight skin shorts like right above the knee with long like high white socks and black pointy shoes. His hair is um, very blonde and pulled back into a ponytail uh, down to his shoulder blades like these bright green eyes and pinpoint ears as an elf and um he has this weird look of like on his face of amusement and like bitchy at the same time so you're not quite sure what's gonna happen (laughs) when you're talking to him well met Montague. pleasure's all mine darling so what brings you here from gag me i haven't gagged in a long time so it's you know it's good to see new recruits we have business with the vault and we hear, ah. we hear you have information that we may find very useful. Yes, I do. I always have useful information. You, do you not see the amount of books on my wall? Full of information, darling. You could read one once in a while. I can tell it's been a while for you. <laughs> so. Imagine Treblecock is enjoying the uh, library you have. Yeah, I could, I could spend days in this office reading all these books you can feel free to take a look around eventually and look at the books and grab something that comes to your liking just remember to return it i remember everybody and i remember where you place it if there's anything nasty left in the books i will fine you and when i i don't mean find i mean fine you you will owe me money (laughs) these are very rare books and very expensive mcnasley don't keep the books away from the bar Uh, mcnasley is Eyeing the books, looking for something about music. Don't worry, darling. The books are eyeing you. <laughs> so, Montague. Yes. We hear that you may have a map to the vault areas, specifically the Thor- Thorkeln's vault. I have a map for you, darling. Don't worry, don't worry. He snaps his fingers, and the map that you are asking for is in front of you. Don't worry, I always have everything needed. It's a map. It's a map. <laughs> I knew it. You are little Dora the Explorers. <laughs> so, let me give you the deep... More like adorable explorers. <laughs> I'll hand the uh, mm. map over to Thaddeus. Well, adorable would be a strong word. <laughs> so, you came here looking for answers of the Collective and the Maze of Chambers, correct? 
You want to get into the vault? Yes, specifically Thor Killen's vault. Thor Killen's vault. Well, I have a lot of information to go over. The head above made me want to make sure I give you all the details. So they gave me this little script to go over. I'm going to just go over it little by little, so don't mind me. Snaps his fingers again. A piece of paper just comes down with all this list of information. The un- the edited part, that is me making sure I can go over everything correctly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Man, this guy I- really sounds like he's speaking from a script. <laughs> I, I made it canon that I'm reading from a script. <laughs> That's how powerful a wizard he is. You know, you know, when you have the higher buffs in the corporation, they make you have to go over the legalities and this. It's kind of like when you're entering, you know, the fantasy uh, phone service and, you know, they have to go over the script of what they can say and what they can't say. It's that kind of mm. shtick. Carry on. So here's the important parts. The collective is a maze of chambers and vaults. Yada yada, it's pretty obvious what this is. Every vault will always have a series of symbols etched into it because, you know, you got to be detailed. Uh, some symbols define level of access to public or private parties. You know, some symbols will mark if the vault is booby-trapped. You don't want to go into the booby-trapped one. Trust me, there's no boobies, all traps. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Most unfortunate. So, so some symbols define if the vault is currently being leased, if it's vacant or past due on fees, because, you know, you got to pay your fees. I'm looking at you, bod. You will be paying a fee if you touch my books. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so the collection has three main factions. You know, my husband Killian, as you he heard, he's the love of my life. You know, you will know him. Like, I don't have to describe him to you. You will know him because he's just that handsome. Um, he did some looking into things before they arrived, and Thor Killian's vault has all three. So here's a fun fact. I, you know, I'm full of fun facts. So the traps are cognitive and recognize people. So, you know, even if you disguise yourself, you know, it may or may not, may not see like how you actually truly look. So be prepared for that. If you want to go all disguise self, remember it's high magic, darling. They can see all sorts of things. So you can't go in there, you know, all nervous and schwitzing and being like, I got this because it's magic. Magic is not to be messed with. It's one of those things, if you dibble, you dabble, you're going to get kaboomed. You got it? I got it. Are we all three in agreement? You dibble, you dabble, you get boomed? Uh, McNastley has been barely paying attention. Here's the thing, the slow ones always don't make it. So if you need a new party member, we have plenty of gag me. You know, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so one important thing is the first main faction is the Diamond Security Guild. They are fully licensed guards that patrol and keep the city secure. So, you know, because no one can just go in nilly willy. You know, you gotta make sure the security and things are okay. It's a vault. Who doesn't, you know, make a vault secured? Only a fool. Don't be a fool. So, the Diamond Guards have paid well. You know, so if you're ever looking to get into the Diamond Guard, you know where to go. They get a whole retirement package and they sign a non disclosure agreement with fatal repercussions for breaking policy. So don't break policy. As he looks over at the Bard again, <laughs> like really close. <laughs> <laughs> the Bard is still up to no good. That's why he keeps watching you, and that's why there's little sensors in here. I'm looking at you, Bard. There are sensors in here. You know, if you want a little bit of volt of electricity to make your hair go up, you're more than welcome to do not so good things. Do you want to hear about the second main faction? Yes. I'm pretty sure you do. Oh, of course. Because these are the accountants guild. They are, let's see, you know, I'm quite the intelligent man, but you know, these are also the intelligent people, but they're just nerds. They're not fun. They know numbers and all they know is numbers. It's quite boring. Have you ever been to dinner with an accountant? Oigvolt. It is the most boring thing of your entire life. I literally just did a spell in Dimension Lord right out the date. Like, <laughs> I was just like, no, I can't do this. So this guild is comprised of accountants and bankers and lawyers. You may want to bag a lawyer, though. They're the total devil. You know, they're totally from the Nine Hells. But you know what? They make a lot of money. That's the one thing. So these people, they draft agreements and employ personnel and manage city assets. They are the governing body and brain to the city, you know, because every group or every city needs a brain. I'm, I'm sure one of you is holding on to the main brain cell in this group. I think we left ours in a robot somewhere. It's, it's, it's debatable. 
<laughs> this is me trying to have total faith in you. Let me let me try. I'm not a man of faith, but here I am trying to be a man of faith. Not going so well. So the third and final faction is simply the architects. This guild is a group of licensed architects, engineers, and scientists that create and maintain the city and the vaults and the vault features. Now, this faction is considered the support to the city and is responsible for the general labor force. You know, more factions, more vaults, more cities, more responsibilities. See, this is why I made sure I got a desk job, so I don't have to deal with this. And I get to talk to you guys, who will immediately leave my room as soon as you physically can, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, important note, the rest of the residents of the city work under the supervision of one of the three factions. The closest judge resides in Sadamar, and she does not frequent to sub-city and treats it like it is not part of her jurisdiction. She always thinks she's so much better than everybody. It's quite ridiculous because you know what? She's not that pretty. Maybe one day you'll understand how that feels, but today is not that day. <laughs> you mentioned the sub-city. Uh, this is the first I've heard of that. Uh, no, the collective is the sub-city of Sadamar. Oh! So you guys are you guys are in Sadamar right now? The collective okay, is okay. its own... It's like its own... Uh, offshoot but it's governed by those three factions oh, i thought there was like a uh, kind of like a lot of the neo anime type where they got tokyo then neo tokyo and then like the underbelly shadow run type Never mind. no satamar is the actual city and then uh the collective is actually like a just a really large you know vault like that was like a <laughs> yeah kind of like the vatican yeah it was yeah, a giant just... dwarven vault that turned into a giant bank with a bunch of vaults in it and that's yeah. where people keep their stuff but it's the size of a city it's just it's not a real city make sense yeah so it's like rome and the vatican got it yep you got it okay. capitalism keeps the wheel going you know you just gotta make a buck or gold we don't really have bucks i've told them time and time again we should invert you know from gold to like cotton like money because you know that way you can throw them at people and it doesn't hurt so much <laughs> you know like when you're tipping and stuff you, you know I, like I, I thrown the gold at them and it looks like it hurts and I'm not even that strong like ugh the wealth I've left on some men but I'm a happily married man man why I don't do those things anymore you know when you're an elf you live for a long time you do things you learn from experiences it's been a many many years so the vault houses the original works of Jim York Gonson Thorkillen. Did I say that right, Manny? Did I say that right? Yeah, you said that right. That's right, Thorkillen. Okay, good. That name is just a little bit harder to say. You know, I've been on in years and, you know, uh, let me... And he snaps his fingers and he puts on his glasses. Oh, so much better. Uh, <laughs> so much better. You know. So, that, the original works are under the strictest of access guidelines. There's only one owner assigned to this vault, and upon their death, a letter is housed in the vault with who and where to send the artifact. So, you know, it's once you got a plan A, you got a plan B, you got a plan C, and hopefully you know the rest of the alphabet and it continues onward. <laughs> so rumors have it that the vault is still currently paid for by Thor Killen. Keep that one in mind. But... This has not been confirmed. This is only a rumor. You know, we have a lot of Yentas in the city, so they love to talk. They love to say things. And I have big elf ears, so of course I love to listen. <laughs> so, important fact. The architects might have the plans. Diamond security may have a way to break in. And accountants might have the vault override. I don't really talk to these people. As I said, they're so boring, except my husband. My husband is the best person in the world. Don't you forget it. He's beautiful. He's handsome. This is his my plug-in for my husband. <laughs> now support your significant other, no matter where you are. <laughs> so I take it Montague's husband is one of the uh, accountant guild? No, Diamond Security is what he said. He's Diamond Security? He is security. He is muscular. Not one of those geeky little accountants. Are you not listening to what I said? They're boring. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to the stories. I just let them pay for wine or something, and then I dimension door out the way. It's fine. So if I needed some insider, if I needed some insider information on how to get into this vault, your husband may have some information for us then also? Yes. You can count on my husband, Killian. Don't forget, the most beautiful man in the world. 
gave me a little bit of information on how to get into the very first door. Listen closely, because if you don't, you could die. Remember, and you are replaceable. You know, you saw it in your little contracts. You're replaceable. You know, even I'm replaceable, but (laughs) it's hard to replace a man like me, honey. (laughs) So, the door has two spells and a basic lock. You'll need to uh, pick the lock and something to disarm the spells. Be careful of that. Spells aren't easy to dispel. So maybe if you have a tad bit of magic behind your back with a bit of, you know, dispel magic, it's like right in the name. Like, you may be able to get through it, but it's high security. They may have things against that. I know a lot of things, but not everything. But the obvious one is the alarm spell. The alarm spell is real simple. It's a little silver wire that goes around in an area, and if you go past it, it either makes a loud ringing sound, or whoever casted the spell, it's a little ding-a-ding-ding in the head. And, you know, that could be even scarier, because you don't even know you set off the alarm. You know, it's just like, it, it's scary. Trust me, I have the alarm spell. It's been fun to scare people. You know, they think they got through, and then they didn't, and then they ended up as under my fireball spell. It's been great. <laughs> but just to make sure that you get everything you need, I do have a lock picking set right here. He snaps his finger and he gives that to you. And here's even a little box of chalk. You know, they're the different colored ones. Like you get, there's red and blue and green. So like, you know, pick your favorite color. You know. Nice. Do you have any more questions for me? So I I'm, would probably glance over at Thaddeus and said, do you have the uh, magic end of that covered correct? I have just... Uh... I have Dispel Magic ready. Really? Well, you jack-of-all-trades, you. I literally have jack-of-all-trades on my character sheet. (laughs) (laughs) Convenient. (laughs) No, it's a very good spell, but just be warned, it may be backed up with some other kind of protection, so if you dispel it, something else may go off. I don't know. I don't run the place. I run this office. As you saw, my name was on the door. Do you have any members of this accounting guild or the uh, the architect guild that you are quite friendly with or that may owe you a favor or two? So for the architects, you know, there's Mickey the Mute and Hom Tolland. Mickey the Mute is wonderful. He's such a great listener. I love him. Doesn't speak a word. He's great. Not as great as my husband, but he's great. Hom Tolland, he's a little bit weird. But I love him. He's so funny. He makes the worst jokes ever. And, you know, if if you can make him laugh, you can get in the right direction. Make him laugh. But give them my name. If you give them my name, you know, you can get a little bit of a leeway. Did you want to know about more other important people? Or did you just want to know about the architects? Yeah. Do you have uh, acquaintances with the accountants guild also? <laughs> you see him look a little, <laughs> like, nervous. I'm not, hmm. <laughs> Acquaintance would be a strong word. Like, um, like this Bubba Tight Lips. He's he's kind of the one I went on that date with a long time ago and kind of dimension doored out of. Yeah, he mm-hmm. hasn't been a real friend of mine ever since. Then there's Planiella. She She's a doll. She still hates me. It's fine. She deserved what she had coming to her. But the good news is she's friends with Manny. They're both friends with Manny. They get along. Here's how it goes. I kind of like stir up the trouble and Manny picks up the pieces, okay. which is why I'm in the office. <laughs> Good to know. Mm-hmm. It, it make, it's great. It works out fabulous. We've been partners for years. We've gone to so many brunches together. Oh, the fantasy mimosas are wonderful. We call them fantasy mimosas because it's quite the fantasy. It is so good. But when it comes to the diamond security, as I said, there's my husband. And you can also talk to Marshall Lockjaw. You know, for someone being named Lockjaw, he certainly talks a lot more than I do. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's kind of like his parents tried to set him up for it and then it failed. But it is what it is. Any more questions for me? Now this Lockjaw that you mentioned, he works with the Diamond Security Guild? Yes, he is partners with my husband, Killian, the greatest man in the world. So you can find them both together. Okay. It's a very private vault, you know. You know, this is the place where you keep your little mistress's panties if you want to keep them in there. It's a weird thing to keep in there, but you know what? People are weird. 
They have the little kinks and fetishes. It's normal. Don't yuck someone's yum. McNasty's attention is <laughs> peaked. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get your attention, darling, on that one. See, key words. <laughs> I mentioned boobies, I mentioned panties, and look at him go. He's ready to pay attention for another... Uh, 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 his attention's gone already. Okay. <laughs> Fill him in later. Uh, Dad didn't love me. <laughs> you see, like, he makes, like, a little note, like, <laughs> just on the side. <laughs> it says, don't let Seder into office again. <laughs> if you can read Elvish, All I might be able to read Elvish. Elvish. Read Elvish. Like, I can only speak common. But um, yeah, he's like not hiding it whatsoever. Like he's clearly writing it down, big letters. He's not scared. Like you could, if you were able to read it, he wouldn't care. <laughs> like it's like don't let this say it into your room again. I will remember your faces. Manny can read mostly his. <laughs> Manny, do not. Manny, Manny chuckles. Manny, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Manny, I'm looking at you. Do not let this one into my office again unless he starts to grow a brain or a better personality. Manny taps the tip of his nose like, I, I got you. <laughs> Picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> I, I have a feeling Manny knows Elvish. Like, I'm sure he forced him to learn Elvish at some point so he could hand him notes. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> he, he definitely looked over and saw that and chuckled to himself before, uh, before, yeah. Yep. Nice. Well, um, aside from your knowledge of the vault and the context that we would need to get more information on those, uh, can you personally tell us anything about uh, this Thor Killen fellow, the author of these books that we're questioning about? Uh, Manny... Manny is actually the one. He'll jump in and say, I, I, I can walk you guys through that. Let's say we get a cold one after this, and, and I can tell you about it down at the tavern. Okay. So I know you're really excited to go and all, but trust me, I have a, a little gift for you. Unfortunately for you, too, as he's looking at the bar. <laughs> so, you know, so he... McDa McNasley sits down yeah, begrudgingly. So, do you want your present or don't you want to? You can either get up and not get a thing, or you can sit down and enjoy your Ooh, choice. Presents. Yes, presents. Who doesn't love a good presence? You know, my favorite time of year is Hanukkah, and we get all the presents for eight days. You know, it's great. I just, I don't really ask for much, except for pretty much everything, <laughs> because I deserve everything. You know, that's just how it goes. But luckily, when you have some magic, you can pretty much just summon whatever you want. Convenient. Anyway, back on topic my poor husband <laughs> imagine the conversations we have on a daily basis and this is what he has to put up with he's so lucky <laughs> who should get a present first uh thaddeus oh uh, hmm you sorcerer i can feel your magic from here he snaps his fingers and a um an orb pops into your lap it's kind of like greenish and weirdly slick throw a loogie at him like it's a, it's a pretty cool orb i think you'll enjoy it so basically you know you know how you love being a physical being well this can turn you into an ooze so like it only works for like an hour once per day but you could turn into an ooze and you can fit through little squeaks and creases of things this will be very good in a vault as long as you don't trigger any traps you know, you will be, this will be very useful to you. But make sure you don't stay in anything for too long, because if you turn back, you get pressed right out, and you take a bunch of force damage. Trust me, it hurts. I've seen it. Some, one man didn't survive it. It was quite ugly. He's actually who I got the orb from. Enjoy. Thank you. You know, you know, you know, you go into the world, you leave out of the world, and everyone takes your things. It's the way of life. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Yeah. <laughs> Mikey Shell. <laughs> So uh -huh. I look over at the paladin, warlock, oathbreaker, mm -hmm. all, all sorts of things. So I, he snaps his fingers again, and a warhammer appears into your hands. Mm. So this is a wonderful warhammer. It's called the Bone Crusher. You know, it sounds obvious. You get to crush some bones. It's a... It's magically inclined, so you get a little bit of a bonus to hitting, and it hurts a little bit more. But here's the real fun part of it. It has this magical effect where you could just keep whacking it away. Ha ha ha, see, I'm full of jokes. So <laughs> basically, when you're in melee with multiple 
partners. Like you can just whack that one and you can whack that one and you can whack that one. You have to make separate swings for all of them. It's not just a you know, circle jerk of all at once. It's you gotta whack this one, you gotta walk that one, you gotta whack that one. It's wonderful. You get through hordes. You are the horde killer. Congratulations, horde killer. All bow down to the horde killer. <laughs> You heard the man bow. <laughs> <laughs> McNasty, do you want your present as well? Are you, are you open and ready for it? McNasty. You ready to be dazzled? What do my goat eyes see? <laughs> t- McNasty turns to play his kazoo. Oh, speaking of kazoo, he snaps his fingers and a kazoo pops into your other hand. Oh, never experienced that before. <laughs> oh god, he's got a magic mm-hmm. kazoo. Yes, this kazoo is quite useful. So, you know how you're supposed to be quite charismatic. So, when you play a little toot-toot on your kazoo, and you expend a charge, it has a limited amount of charges per day, you can use your charismatic self to escape certain things, such as holding off people from your mind, or holding off other things where you may not be so good at. Like, you're a bard, so you're pretty charismatic, and you're pretty dexterous, so, you know, it doesn't really help those things. But, you know, if you need to be a little bit stronger, or a little bit wiser, a little bit smarter... Those things, and even have a little more endurance, but mostly smarter... So, here's your Hanukkah gifts. Enjoy. Hanukkah has come early this year. I know you're so verklempt. It's so overwhelming. Like, um, Oiga Vault. Like, this is amazing. Even though Oiga Vault is not really a good term for this, I just love to say it. You know, this is so amazing. You're verklempt. It's, oh my god, thank you, Montague. <laughs> you're so generous. Oi. Like, you know, those things. Oh, uh, Montague, you're such a mensch. You're welcome. Manny will jump Enjoy in. Enjoy those gifts. And like, all right, guys, uh, Montague will probably go on like this for another eight minutes if we let him. We should probably hit the tavern now, don't you think? And he continues on for the next eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, McNasty attempts to go invisible and then attempts to leave. Darling, there's, <laughs> there, there, I have true seeing in this room. I, I can see you. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the gifts. You're very welcome. You're such mensches, excluding him. He's a putz. Uh, McNasty returns and waves his new kazoo and a very strong middle finger. <laughs> I, I, I can see you, darling. I'm, you know what? If he does that again, I'm taking away his present and I'm going to fireball him in front of everybody. Just <laughs> I'll grab the bar and go in the other room. <laughs> you know what? At least he's good on the kazoo. And I hate the kazoo, but at least he's not bad at it. I'm sure he's bad at other things, like being smart or wise, and just continues listing off a of bad thing about what he thinks of this person. Another eight minutes. <laughs> of kvetching. He's kvetching for the next eight minutes. Oh, God. i got to find a kazoo version of, like, Hava Nagila or something. <laughs> oh, no, don't let him get married. This sounds bad. <laughs> or, or maybe some Neil Diamond that'll work. Okay, and here's probably a good spot to take a break. This concludes this episode of A Fool's Quest. Join us next time for a more fun and daring adventure. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to like, subscribe, review, and comment on your favorite platform to listen to A Fool's Quest. Mitchie, thank you so much for coming on and playing the role of Montague. And uh, why don't you tell our listeners where you can find your amazing content? Yes, I am Mitchie. I am also known as D&D Homebrew 5E. You can find me on Patreon as patreon.com slash D&D underscore homebrew 5E. Or you can find me on Twitter with the as just homebrew 5E. Or Tumblr, but don't worry about that one. That's so many shadows. But, you know, D&D Homebrew 5e, you'll find me. I'm there. Like grinder, but worse. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Fantastic. Sweet. Thank you so much, Mitchie, for doing this. 